Do you like animals? Do you like video games? If so, you have come to the right video. Today, I'm going to be recommending five games that strongly feature animals that I think are amazing. In some of these, you play as an animal, while some just have animals. Anyway, let's get into it. Number five, Spirit of the North. This is a humble little indie game where you play as a fox, navigating their way through a landscape of snow and mountains. Along the way, you come across various puzzles that you can solve with the help of your companion, the spirit of another fox. There is no dialogue in this game. It's up to the player to piece together the story as they progress. If there's one word I would use to describe Spirit of the North, it's peaceful. The landscapes are beautiful and the music is relaxing. There are no onslaughts of enemies to stress you out. The journey you take is short. The first time I played it, it took me a little over four hours to get through. But I think this one is worth checking out if you're in the mood for a nice little animal-themed adventure. Bonus points if you like foxes. Number 4, Spyro the Dragon. Spyro is a series of games where you play as a dragon. That's right, we're including mythical animals in this list. I don't discriminate. There are a lot of Spyro games, but for this list, I'm going to recommend the Reignited Trilogy. It's the most recent one to come out, and it features the original three games completely remastered. You get to run around platform-based levels using your fire breath to scorch enemies, or you can ram into them. While Spyro can't fly in normal levels, you can still glide from place to place. The worlds are bright and colorful, and the characters are charming. However, if you're looking for something a little more serious, you could check out the Legend of Spyro trilogy. These three games are far from perfect, and many don't like them because of how drastically different they are from the original Spyro games. But personally, I still enjoy them. They're more focused on telling a story, and it's cool to me because it's a story about dragons. If you think that's cool too, you might be able to overlook these games' flaws and give them a go. Number three, Pokemon. Just like with Spyro, this isn't a singular game, but rather a franchise. There are lots of Pokemon games, but I recommend this series because it is very animal-oriented. While none of these creatures actually exist in real life, they're still animals. I mean, look at that. That's just a bird. But anyway, I think this is a great series for animal lovers. You can create a team of up to six Pokemon and battle with them against other Pokemon. You'll encounter many of them in the wild, which you can catch and add to your team. Depending on the game, you can also feed, pet, and play with your Pokemon. With this franchise being so vast, there are many games to choose from, and you'll hear a lot of varying opinions on which ones are the best. But for today, I'll specifically point out a couple of the current gen games. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu slash Let's Go Eevee is a really great starting point if you've never played a Pokemon game, in my opinion. It's a remake of the 1998 Pokemon Yellow. The graphics are cute and simple, and really, that's a good way to describe the whole game. It's not too difficult, but it's a fun romp as you level up your team and become a better Pokemon trainer. You can learn the basics of Pokemon without getting too overwhelmed. Another game would be Pokemon Legends Arceus. It's set in the far past, when people were only just beginning to tame Pokemon. You can travel out into the world and catch Pokemon, learning about them in the process. A big plus to this game is its revamped gameplay. Transitions into Pokemon encounters are practically seamless, which is really nice. In fact, unlike previous games, you don't even have to battle Pokemon to catch them. It's also really cool to see the Pokemon roaming around the world instead of hiding in the tall grass. While the story isn't anything too groundbreaking, it's still easy to get immersed into this vast world of magical creatures. No matter which Pokemon game you end up choosing to play, if you really love animals, you'll probably like it. Number two, Okami. Let me just start out by saying this. Okami is amazing. You play as a wolf named Amaterasu, who is the goddess of the sun. To put the plot very simply, you have to save the world from evil. Look, I'm no good at plot summaries, but you'll just have to trust me on this one. The story is really good. You meet so many charming characters, many of whom go through their own arcs. But beyond the story, the gameplay is what makes Okami so good. I've actually made a video about this, but the game embraces the fact that you're playing as a wolf, which is why I'm recommending it for animal lovers. You can bark to scare other animals, or you can dig to find treasure. You can even be petted by human characters. 
In addition to that, even as a wolf, you can interact with other animals by feeding them, or even talking to them, as some important characters are actually animals. But here's a rather important gameplay element. Amaterasu's tail acts as a celestial paintbrush, which you can use to paint symbols onto the world. Each symbol you learn is a new ability that lets you interact with the world and solve puzzles or battle enemies. You learn abilities throughout the whole game, which keeps it fresh. And that's a good thing, because this is a long game. You can easily put 40 hours in a playthrough. Additionally, I'd like to point out that if you like Zelda games, you will probably like Okami, because it very much plays like a Zelda game. But regardless, I will always highly recommend Okami for its fun gameplay, engaging story, and timeless art style. Honorable Mention Before we get to number one, I'd like to present an honorable mention. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. The reason it doesn't quite make the list is because it's mostly not about animals. However, I still thought it was worth mentioning real quick because the character you play as, Link, actually turns into a wolf for part of the game, and that's pretty cool. At first, you can only become a wolf in certain areas, but later on, you do get the ability to become one whenever you want. Even though Twilight Princess isn't quite as focused on animals as these other games, I still think it is very good, and it just might pique your interest if you're a fan of wolves. Number 1. The Last Guardian to me, this is THE game for animal lovers. It's actually my favorite game of all time. But it's not for everyone, and I get that. But before we get into all of that, let me explain what the game is actually about. You play as a boy who wakes up in some strange ruins with a giant creature chained up next to you. The creature is called Trico, and it's some sort of weird hybrid between a dog, a cat, and a bird. Trico is hostile toward you at first, but as you give him food, you build up trust until he lets you close enough to unchain him. From this point onward, it's all about finding a way out of the ruins with Trico as you build a bond with him. As the two of you grow closer, you can give him commands and tell him where to go. He'll also protect you from the armored enemies scattered throughout the ruins. There are some cute things you can do with Trico, like pet him to sleep or throw food in the air for him to catch. Now, obviously, the biggest appeal of this game is, of course, Trico himself. His AI is genuinely impressive, as he acts like a real animal, despite being one that doesn't exist in real life. However, this realistic AI is actually why some people don't like The Last Guardian. When you first get the ability to give Trico commands, he can be slow to respond. Sometimes he doesn't listen. And this frustrates some players. Some people want him to instantly do what they tell him, and I get that, but that's just not how it works. As you go on, it does get easier to give him commands. And at points, he'll even figure stuff out on his own without you telling him what to do. But it does take a while to get to that point. And that's why I think this game is perfect, only for some people. If you are someone who is not the biggest fan of animals, and you like fast-paced games, then I honestly wouldn't recommend The Last Guardian. But if you just love animals, and are willing to be patient and sit through a slower-paced journey, then I really do think this just might be the game for you. Personally, I don't mind Trico's AI a single bit. And there is a method to giving him commands, which you'll get the hang of after at least a playthrough. But what matters more to me is the story being told here. The story of a boy bonding with a creature. I always come back to The Last Guardian, not because I'm looking for fast-paced action, but because of the emotional moments. There's something about it that's so comforting to me. With all that said, it is important to acknowledge that it's not a perfect game. The camera is, frankly, quite awful, and the controls can be a bit clunky at times. And the button prompts that pop up keep popping up throughout the whole game. However, these are flaws that I'm willing to overlook when I play. If this seems like a game you would like, I'd encourage you to at least check it out. There's no other game quite like The Last Guardian, and I'll never forget it. So there you have it, five awesome games about animals. Now there's a reason I didn't call this video top five games about animals, and that's because there might be something even better out there, and I want to hear about them. Have you played an amazing animal themed game that wasn't on the list? If so, leave a comment, I want to know about them. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Until next time, see ya!